I guess. Just wheeling on the buys here. But I get your, guess you're really wondering why you're watching me lift this weight here. And as you're watching, you're also thinking to yourself, that looks like a lot of work and must be a lot of power involved there. But you really want to know quantitatively how much work and how much power is involved. Hey guys, this is Brian from HowReallyWorks.com. We have bite-sized content for those in the radiology field and especially for technologists. We're, we're talking about mechanical energy and then today we're going to be talking about work. power again work and power so we talked last time about force if you haven't watched the one about force click on the little video up there to see that one about force that we have again we talked about force equals the mass times the acceleration so we talked about weight and how on earth the force is also quantified as the weight and we have one pound equals 4.5 newtons and newtons is our unit of force in the SI units and today we want to talk again about work so we'll just call it big W and then about power so we we now know about force and work for mechanical work we can just talk about Work is just the force exerted over a given distance. So just force times distance. So in that case, I was lifting a 20 pound weight. So that weight, let's say is 20 pounds. And then we wanna convert that to Newtons. So we have a standard unit. So we have pounds on the top. So we'll put pounds on the bottom. So one pound is 4.5 Newtons. So then we'll multiply across 4.5 times 20 is 90. Then pounds will cancel out and we'll get 90 Newtons. And then let's say I was lifting it, imagine for simplicity, I was lifting it just half a meter straight up in the air. So then the work is 90 Newtons times 0 0.5 meters. So the work is just 45 Newton meters. And just like you've seen in the last couple, typically we're gonna introduce a new unit when we talk about a new quantity, because we don't wanna say multiple uh, units together. So we're gonna talk about 45 joules. That's the work that we had to do right there is 45 joules. And then the, after we know about work, we want to talk about how does that happen if we're doing work, if we speed up the work or if we slow down the work. This is the amount of work I had to do, but it doesn't take into account, this measure of work doesn't take into account how quickly I was picking up that weight. So if I picked up that weight really slowly, or if I picked up that weight really quick, I still do the same amount of work, right? But power is gonna help us talk about how that work happens with respect to time. So again, power is going to be just the work that we do in a given amount of time. So again, this work is gonna be joules as far as the units go, like we just talked about. So it'll be joules per second. Time is seconds typically that we talk about. So imagine the same kind of thing. I was doing one, two, three. So I was doing it about once per second. So the power is just 45 joules per one second. So we're gonna introduce again a new unit, 45 watts. And I know that number sounds pretty small. If you're used to doing workouts at the gym, you, you hop on a elliptical, that might give you a power. Or if you hop on uh, a cycling bike, a lot of times they'll measure the power. 
you can be up in the 200s, 300s when you're peaking out as far as the watts that you're exerting there. So 45 again was pretty low. So I don't have any excuse as to why I was breathing heavy while I was lifting that weight. But that's what we're talking about when we talk about power is the work that we're doing as a function of time. So if, if, if I was doing that really slowly, so imagine it took me 10 seconds. If it took me 10 seconds just to lift up that weight, then what would the power be? So we would just say power, again, equals 45 joules, and then divided by 10 seconds. So that power would actually only be 4.5 watts. Likewise, imagine I lifted it super fast and it only took me one tenth of a second. So if I did power equals 45 joules divided by 0.1 seconds, then I get 450 watts. So in this way you can see power really takes into account how fast you were doing the activity, how quickly you could accomplish that same amount of work. Thanks again. Again, if you are new to this channel, what we have is stuff about radiology. This is our Rad Basics series where we give you the backgrounds for the basics in radiation. And the next thing you want to know is about potential and kinetic energy. So click on that video. It's going to really help, especially when you talk about how the x-ray tube works, the fact that we take electrons, we impart them with a high amount of potential energy by having what we call a kilovolt potential. And then that turns into kinetic energy as they cross cathode rather to the anode. So check out that next one, potential and kinetic energy.